A um, couple of picks are basically just involved in the future of entertainment, which I want to talk about, which is uh, Stars, Take Two, and Walt Disney. Um, whatever word you want to talk about, we'd love to get your thoughts on these. Sure. Well, and it's a conversation. I'll just say a few things. And uh, first of all, um, I like I really like content companies. You know, there's there's a great um, I would say false argument that goes on between which is king, uh, con- is content king or is distribution king? Um, and the truth is, you need to have both. Both are always going to be there. And if the scale ever tilts too far, and everyone's saying, "Well, distribution is all that matters," then I'm going to start saying, "No, content matters a lot." Sometimes people go the other way, and they say, "You know, just having great content—that's all that matters." And but you kind of have to be on Netflix or need Netflix if you want to have a lot of viewers. So the good thing about Netflix, which we're not talking about today, is that it has both. And so companies that that do both are really powerful and admirable companies. But yeah, I, Stars, Take Two, and Disney. Um, of those three, of course, Disney by far the largest and most successful with both content and distribution. And, and so many channels to take those entertainment properties, whether it's a lunchbox or a, a could theme Could you park. believe the success of Star Wars? I couldn't... Well, I would say I, I could believe it, Sean, in the yeah. sense that, I, I mean, I, we, maybe we talked about this before it came out, but I mean, I think we all, a lot of people expected it to be the biggest movie of right. all time, which it has been. Yeah. But I have to admit, I haven't actually really kept up with the numbers. So, what has blown you away? The speed it got okay. to seven hundred and fifty million dollars domestically in like two less than two weeks. I mean, crazy numbers. And I mean, it took what uh, Avatar had a crazy, but it didn't have any competition. It right. was a summer movie, all this stuff. I just couldn't believe the speed. Cause I, fully I, I know we took this. out a theater for some employees here at the Motley Fool right nearby. Did either of you guys attend that first morning? We Absolutely. both did. Absolutely. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah, Good. I would. Um, I, I could never we, turn down an opportunity. Told, I think we told our <laughs> listeners about it, right? Because yeah. this okay. was on Good. a Friday. Yeah. Good. It would have been. So it broke a record for me too, personally. It's the first movie I've seen three times in theaters. All right. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Contributing as much as I can to those <laughs> right. record-breaking box office numbers. Disney, thanks you. What's funny is that that shows a little bit of a generation gap here at the table because. Um, having grown up myself in an age where there were no, not even VCRs yet, um, when you went to the movie theater, that was going to be your one shot to see that movie. Right. Uh, you usually would go, for me, at least three times to the original Star Wars because you didn't know that it would ever come back. It would be on TV five years later, maybe. You'd see it once here or there. So the, the idea of actually being able to eventually have a DVD that you could buy and watch it any time you wanted would have been magic to me at the age of 10. Um, so for that reason, I think I've only seen it once because I'm expecting to see it many times afterward. But to go to the theater that many times is outstanding. I would say it was almost de rigueur, you know, in 1975. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, yeah, it's a, it, was, it was a fine movie. I, I thought it was very derivative of the first Star Wars, the New Hope. It definitely structured a lot. Felt no that spoilers way. for yeah. those possibly few people who haven't yet seen it who want to see it. But um, I did feel like it was a very safe approach to the reboot. I thought it was powerful and important, uh, and obviously for Disney. But you know, getting back to all three of these companies, they all have content. And, um, and I, I think that um, in a world where d- distribution is getting easier and cheaper and more global all the time, I mean, you just pin something up on a website, and anybody can watch it or rewatch it multiple times. We hope that that website is a legal website. Um, in fact, piracy is kind of largely going away because of the cheapness and accessibility of so much of this content. Anyway, so I like all these companies. Of course, Stars and Take Two are much edgier and niche compared with Disney and its content. And another company that we have, Lionsgate Films, is also another example, kind of Hunger Games, where they're not going for Winnie the Pooh, which, by the way, I'm a huge Winnie the Pooh fan, but, <laughs> but you know, they're going for usually sci-fi, or you think about stars with Outlander. Um, these, are, these are companies that know their audience and are creating content that lives in libraries for a long, long time and just keeps creating recurring cash flows for the companies that create good content. So, yes, I like all these. I realize I'm rambling, so I need, no, need to fine, keep moving. Yeah. I mean, I really love video games. And why do I love video games? Not only because I'm a gamer, but because I love interactive content. I think that that's, that's one of the great developments of my lifetime, is content going interactive, being able to be a character or tell your own story uh, and do it maybe socially with other people online. Very different from just sitting there and sitting... Uh, Looking at a screen, uh, carefully curated, directed, um, you know, non-interactive bit of fiction that we all grew up with and still enjoy today, movies and TV. So I really love interactive content. And as things proceed into virtual reality, the next big medium and channel, uh, that's going to be even more um, valuable. So um, a company like Take Two, of course, I, I have a special feeling for. 
Yeah, Vince, did you in your research did you come across any uh, particular games or trends towards like virtual reality or anything from Take Two? Well, the thing, interesting thing in terms of just gaming overall, from my personal experience, is you know I pl- I played games for a long time, high school, college, and then I stopped for some time. Vince. So- what happened? There was about five years, I'd say, where I just I didn't have time and right. I kind of lost interest. Yeah. School. Yeah. So I picked. I'd All say right. in the past six months, I've gotten gone into PC gaming again. So you know, and I have, have noticed in that five years yeah. a ton of changes in the way that it's delivered. So uh, David mentioned piracy. You know, they have reduced privacy or uh, piracy with games a lot by making it so easy and seamless for you to get that game. It, it, people are willing to pay that price because the delivery uh, is just so simple now. You can have that game in two hours, download it, don't have to go to the store or worry about anything like that. And also, I just think it's really interesting as well is, it, you know, they before you know you'd have a new release, you'd have a ton of sales in the month or two after, and then it kind of bottoms out. But now they have this longer tail because there's all these DLC packages, uh, expansions to just. For one title, and you can really extend the revenue that it generates. And you know, I've gotten hooked into that as well with some of the games that I like. If if I spend a lot of time on it, but I get tired of certain maps or gameplay styles, then I will download or and purchase some of the newer ones. And it's really interesting to see how that's allowed. Take two, they have you know their mega titles like Grand Theft Auto, but some of the other ones as well. Like they've introduced like this online currency into their NBA games, which has really been successful for them. And it's just. Ten, you know, when I was playing game 2010, sure, there was online multiplayer and things like that, but having that sophistication... Now there are free agents. What's going on? <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> fun. Yeah, very well put, Vince. I, I agree. And you, know, you think about the, this company, its ability through downloadable content, D- DLC, to extend um, the value of just brands and franchises that it has. And it kind of reminds me a little bit about what's happened with television and why I think we're living in the so-called golden age of television. Because, you know, for a lot of people, they don't... Um, so, if you are a busy professional, let's give you a spouse and maybe a child or two, um, and you only have 45 minutes uh, of entertainment for the night, you're much more likely to select characters that you know, a continuing story that you appreciate, and in a bite-sized chunk of 45 minutes than you are a traditional two-hour movie. Possibly commercial-free. Possibly commercial-free, <laughs> indeed. So, that's such a compelling value proposition. So, you have television is just blooming with that and it's kind of the same a little bit with video games in that if you already have the character in the game now you can extend it and keep playing it with new content as opposed to buying the next video game and so we're essentially seeing the extension of valuable franchises into deeper value um, uh, for the companies that own these characters and these stories so yeah Grand Theft Auto is obviously a prime example within um, the world of video games, but as Vince mentioned, of course, Take-Two has a lot of other games besides Tales. Uh, Borderlands is a, is a really fun game for people, uh, a cartoonish um, role-playing game shooter, a real well, mashup. Like a little, yeah. Kind of, yeah, really, that's a fun game. But they, uh, the NBA game is a big success for them. And, we should probably keep moving, guys, because I oh, can talk fine. too long no, about no, video no, games. That's fine. I'm really glad that Vince has come back, though. He came home. He had five years off from the medium. I, well, I... Uh, I stopped playing for a couple of years, and then uh, I played uh, the third, second or third Halo when I was in college, and I had stopped or whatever, and I came back, and these 12-year-old kids were destroying yeah, me on yeah. Xbox Live. That's one really funny it thing very about humbling. playing games on the internet, is basically you don't know who you're playing, first of all, but you're playing really the best players in the world, right. potentially. Unlike the NFL, where I would never be able to get down on the field with any NFL right. player, but online, multiplayer, you're playing people who are you could unbelievably be, yeah. great. At, uh, at, at these games. Uh, of course, yeah. good systems kind of match you up at appropriate levels, but that's one of the fun things I think about playing online video games is that you can play people who are just way too good. 